The idea of a paperless office has been around since the 1970s, an office where wasteful paper use has been replaced with electronic collaboration and record keeping, increasing efficiency while saving the environment. Now in the 21st century, we have e-readers, iPads, 4G networks, but old-fashioned wood pulp still has a place in our world. What is it about paper that keeps it around when a paperless society has been touted for decades? Is it an impossible goal? Hi, I'm Angela Rado. I'm a senior at MIT. I'm studying math and management science. Today, Angela will find out just how much paper she uses in her daily life when she cuts it out completely. I'm usually in a rush. I'm usually <laughs> spilling things. I'm usually taking notes. I'm usually, uh, I don't know, just running around doing things. And if I ever had to stop because I had to realize that I'm not allowed to use paper, I really I think I would get very frustrated. This is like how I spend my meetings usually, and I'm actually having one of these meetings today. And so I have software to do it online, and I'm going to hope that my partner doesn't mind that too much. <laughs> but as Angela struggles to live just one day without paper, is the environmental impact of her sacrifice worth the inconvenience? Is it even a good idea? Going paperless today would not be a good idea at all. Leo Bonani, creator of SourceMap, a website that tracks the environmental impacts of products, studies the nuances that keep this a complicated issue. Uh, we know how to make paper that's you know, easily reusable and, and compostable, and we know how to make paper that lasts for generations, but we only know how to make one kind of computer, and that's not the kind of computer that we want to be making too many of. Today's computers contain common resources like copper, some that are running out like tin, then there are toxic materials like mercury, lead, chromium, and bromine. There's uh, about 50 materials. They come from at least two dozen countries, and they zigzag all over the world before they end up in your lap, basically. So that's kind of like a recipe. We say, I want to make this thing, the screen, I want to make the battery. What, piece, what components are there? What materials do I need? And how much energy and how much transportation? Manufacturing an e-reader requires 50 times greater mass of minerals than a printed book, 77 more gallons of water, and emits 100 times more greenhouse gases. There's also an issue of lifetimes of the two. Unfortunately, right now, some computers get thrown out after six months, and some of them last six years, but none of them last any longer. So if you're talking about an heirloom or something that ends up in a public library, uh, a book is vastly preferable to a computer, where even the best estimate is that something on a hard disk would last 50 years. Fifty years is nothing for a well-made book. But what about all the other paper products that are used and almost immediately thrown away? Like a paper coffee cup. Luckily, Angela planned ahead and brought her own reusable mug. Can I get the tallest of the Yeah, and you know you get 10 uh, cents off if you use your personal cup. I didn't know that. It's been a little more stressful than I expected, actually. Uh, I was really looking forward to a hot, warm soup on this cold day, and instead I had to get something cold and something that wasn't wrapped in paper. One thing I didn't foresee is that I would have a runny nose, <laughs> and I realized I couldn't use tissues. Theoretically, I'm supposed to be carting this around every day if I want to be really efficient. They supposedly you know, make their cups from however much percent consumer waste. If I then recycle that and it gets reused to make another cup, I mean, is that really much worse? Unfortunately, recycling isn't as simple as throwing paper into a bin. How much energy do we need to recycle? Uh, what other chemicals might be discharged to the environment as process of recycling? Most people think recycling is uh, generally a good thing to do for the environment. Uh, most people think when you recycle something, it's going to become that same product again down the road. So they think that if you recycle a piece of office paper, it's going to be made into a piece of office paper. If you recycle an aluminum can, it'll become an aluminum can. Actually, what happens is much more complicated. It's called downcycling. Downcycling means that high-quality office paper will be shredded and pulped and made into lower-quality paper like newsprint until it has gone through the cycle a few times and is no longer recyclable. For that shiny white office paper, fresh materials are required. Paper, computers, and even recycling all require precious energy and resources. So neither a paperless world nor today's wasteful world is ideal. So what is? You can look critically at a lot of paper products maybe that aren't really needed. So the ideal thing is to be able to reuse a material over and over again in its current state. So designing durable products that are going to live a very long time and they're not going to need to be remanufactured over that length of time. 
And from someone who's lived without paper, even for a day, the verdict is clear. It's such an, a convenient tool for so many things, and there aren't good substitutes at this point. As is the solution. Reduction is probably a realistic goal. <laughs> mm -hmm.